When it comes to bags, fabric type is one of the key indicators in looks, performance, and durability. There are so many options and technical terms to navigate. In this video, we'll run through some of the common fabric types and whether or not they may or may not be the right choice for you. Hey, I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing that bell icon for notifications. We've tested and reviewed hundreds of backpacks and used some of these as a basis for a list of some of our favorite fabrics. Of course, everyone has different preferences and needs. For more information on individual bags, check out the link to our reviews down in the description below. We'll also leave a link to a guide that'll help you choose the best travel backpack for you. Let's dive in. You'll see the term denier come up a lot when looking for bags. This is a measurement system used to classify the thickness of thread within a woven fabric. You'll often see this listed as a number followed by a capital D. If you take equal lengths of two different threads, the one that weighs more has a higher denier. The standard is based on 9,000 meters of a single strand of silk. That weighs about one gram, which translates to one denier. Anything lighter is considered a microfiber. As a general rule, higher denier means heavier fabric which can also increase durability. However, certain fibers can be stronger than others, even if they weigh less. More goes into durability than just denier. Look out for weaves like ripstop and ballistic, which can be found in materials like nylon and polyester. They're great if you're traveling through rough terrain or you want peace of mind while you're on the road. Ripstop does exactly what it sounds like stops rips. Reinforced threads create a grid pattern that prevents tears from spreading if they do happen. The threads are thinner, so it's lightweight and durable, which is why you often see it on outdoor bags. On the other hand, ballistic relies on a basket weave that's created with thicker threads, often 1,000 denier and higher. It's abrasion and puncture resistant, but can get heavy, so it's something to avoid if weight is your number one concern. With those keywords in mind, let's get into some key fabrics. Whether you're commuting to the office or hiking on your favorite trail, nylon is versatile enough to handle just about anything. That's why it's one of the most common materials out there, and not just with backpacks. You'll find nylon in clothing, rope, and even toothbrushes. Nylon was the front runner in the creation of ballistic and ripstop weaves mentioned earlier. Both were developed in World War II by DuPont, a leader in creating polymers for fabrics. They made parachutes with ripstop nylon to manage tears developed in the field. They also use ballistic nylon in body armor to help stop shrapnel and projectiles. Nylon runs the gamut from heavy duty to ultralight. For example, 200D nylon is often used in packable day packs that feel similar to a thin windbreaker or rain jacket. 1000D can be used in packs built to last. They have a thicker and more robust feel. That said, nylon isn't super breathable and has less UV resistance than other fabrics. It can weaken over time with extended sun exposure and be more susceptible to tears. But if you're in the market for excellent strength to weight ratio and you want a lot of variety in the choices that you have, nylon may be a great choice for you. For something less expensive than nylon that's still able to handle just about any activity, Check out polyester. While it's usually associated with clothing, polyester is used in many different items, including water bottles and car tires. It was developed in the early 1940s and skyrocketed in popularity by the 50s because of the low production cost. Thanks to the resistance from staining, wrinkling, and shrinking, it was considered to be the perfect fabric for clothing. And it also has great qualities for packs. It has a higher UV resistance than nylon, so it's great for an outdoor bag since it won't fade or weaken as quickly with sun exposure. Recycled polyester is also becoming more common, which is easier on your budget and conscience. Plus, polyester takes to dyes and digital printing more easily than nylon. This means you can opt for interesting patterns and designs, like the taste Sky Scene Toast backpack. Hmm, toasty. Looks aside, it can't compete with the strength to weight ratio of nylon, even if they both have the same denier. But if you want a day pack that can hit the trail without hitting your budget, polyester is an excellent choice. After you choose the right backpack fabric, you'll need to find a bag that works for you. For access to exclusive deals and giveaways with top brands, Check out Pack Hacker Pro. Save some cash and easily plan your next trip all in one place. The Pro community is filled with welcoming individuals who are eager to share their knowledge with you. Participate in discussions and chat directly with our team. Unlimited access to community-driven info gives you the tools you need to make every adventure better than the last. Plus, joining Pro is the best way to support us so we can keep helping you find the right gear. Check out the link down in the description below for more information on Pro. Now, let's get back into some fabrics. 
Another trait to keep in mind is water resistance, especially if you're carrying around expensive electronics. Pack cloth is a great material if you like the durability of nylon and want to increase protection. It's a coated fabric that was originally used to make backpacks for parachutes in the military and is still used in skydiving today. The lightweight and water resistant properties make it a popular choice for outdoor applications like rain covers. It was also adopted by the hiking community and is found in day bags and commuter packs. Pack cloth is made with nylon, usually 400 or 500 denier. It's then coated with a thin layer of polyethylene, which is water resistant and easy to wipe clean. Since it's made with a standard weave and lighter denier, it's less durable than ripstop and ballistic nylons and scuffs easily. However, if you're looking for easy care bag material that holds up well in inclement weather, pack cloth is worth a look. If you like the water resistance of pack cloth but want something with more durability, make sure to check out Tarpaulin. It has a long lasting PVC coating that adds strength, making it a popular fabric for temporary shelters, equipment covers, and gear protection. It was first used as sailcloth when cotton canvas was coated in tar to prevent mildew at sea. Nowadays, tarpaulin has switched to synthetic coatings like polyethylene and PVC. The base fabric can still be cotton, but polyester and nylon are more common, especially when it comes to backpacks. Its combination of a strong base and coating provides strength and weather resistance that won't wear off over time. However, it can add extra weight and the slick look may not be for everyone. It has a more rubbery feel compared to pack cloth and it does scratch and scuff more easily, affecting the aesthetic. With that in mind, tarpaulin still has a lot to offer, especially if you want extra protection in nasty weather. With so many fabrics out there, it can be hard to settle on a single option. Cordura is a brand that provides plenty of options to choose from. Instead of one specific fabric, Cordura offers a range of quality fabrics like ripstop and ballistic nylon. They're used in anything from luggage to footwear and even some military products. The brand is owned by the fiber manufacturer Invista and they use the newest technology to create high quality fabrics. Everything they produce is run through performance tests before being given the Cordura trademark. The name has a well-deserved reputation for quality which sometimes comes at a higher price compared to unbranded fabrics. They also specialize in durable materials that can be on the heavier side. So if weight is your primary concern, some Cordura fabrics may not be what you're looking for. That said, Cordura is a great choice if you want tested and proven quality. If weight is your number one concern, Dyneema is a hard fabric to beat. Like polyester and nylon, Dyneema is a thread that can be woven into many types of fabric. Originally called Cuban fiber, it's made using ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is a fancy way of saying super strong stuff. In fact, it's been trademarked as the strongest fiber in the world and is 15 times stronger than steel compared by weight. With those stats, it's no surprise that Dyneema shows up in gear like bulletproof vests, armored vehicles, and you guessed it, backpacks. The fibers are laid in alternating directions and sealed with a polyester film. This makes for an incredibly light and strong water resistant fabric. It also makes it rather expensive and a bit crinkly. The fabric doesn't have a lot of stretch, which can make it hard to fully pack out your bag. Plus the indestructible material may be overkill for daily use. However, if you want a bag that weighs next to nothing and can survive almost anything, Dyneema is a great choice. Keeping pace as one of Dyneema's competitors, x pack is another fabric that boasts a strong strength to weight ratio. The brand Dimension Polyant started x pack by specializing their sailcloth materials into backpacks. x pack is a composite fabric, meaning it's made up of several materials layered together, sort of like a fabric sandwich. The first layer is what's called a face fabric, like ripstop nylon or polyester. It can be anywhere from 200 to 1,000 denier making it a great choice for both lightweight day packs and heavy duty travel backpacks. Next is a layer of X-ply mesh. This was specially developed by X-Pack and has a diamond pattern to reinforce the fabric in all directions. These two layers are sealed together with a thin coating of polyester, which helps with weather resistance. Some X-Pack options also have a fourth layer of fabric backing, which helps with durability. Together, these fabrics come together to create a strong, lightweight, and weather resistant fabric known as X-Pack. It can also be a bit crunchy and the raised diamond pattern might not be for everyone. Thanks to the variety in thickness and weight, X-Pack is a fabric that works in a variety of different bag applications. 
Unlike the previous materials, not everything is about going as lightweight as possible. Maybe you want a quality pack that you can rock anywhere from the office to the trail. Wax Canvas is another water-resistant fabric that came from the early sailing industry. After noticing that sails perform better when wet, sailors started coating their canvas with oil. Over time, they switched to using wax and introduced the technique to the garment industry in the 1920s. It was used to make jackets and hats until synthetics were developed in the 40s. Even though it can't live up to the strength to weight ratio of synthetic fabrics like nylon, wax canvas still has a lot going for it. It ages beautifully, picking up scuffs and patina that adds to the nostalgia factor. However, it does need to be rewaxed every couple years to keep the water resistant properties. That said, wax canvas can give you a beautiful bag with a heritage feel and modern durability. If you want that heritage look and crave something more professional, Leather has an excellent track record of being a great choice for bags. It's the original tried and true bag material used all the way back in 1200 BCE by ancient Greeks and Romans. The leather bags can be expensive, they age beautifully and mold to your form over years of use. Leather is also pretty heavy, so it's not the best choice if you carry a lot of gear. Faux leather, on the other hand, is a less expensive option with a similar look. It's widely used for upholstery and clothing since it's easier to care for. Faux leather can also be called vegan leather, which can sometimes be made with sustainable materials like cork or pineapple leaves. But it's usually made with a PVC coating on polyester fabric which can crack and flake over time. However, it's a great choice if you want that leather look without the use of animal products. Leather hides are split into two main layers for use, the top grain layer and the lower split layer. The grain layer is dense, high quality, and strong. It's where you'll find full grain leather, which includes the original marks and scratches from the hide. Some manufacturers will shave off the imperfections or use a stencil to add some texture to the leather, this is called top or corrected grain leather. Full grain is typically the highest quality, but top grain or corrected grain leather is also a good shout. The lower split layer is less dense, making it less durable and less expensive. Here, you'll find genuine suede and bonded leather, the last of which is made with leather scraps that are ground up and glued back together. Keep in mind that bonded and genuine leather can be embossed to make them look like full grain leather, so make sure to read the fine print. Investing in high quality leather can give you a bag that will last a lifetime. Of course, it needs to be cared for, involving oiling, conditioning, and keeping the bag dry. But it can be a great investment of time and money if it's the best material for you. So there you have it, our breakdown of common backpack fabrics. Be sure to check out the reviews and guides over on our site, as well as other videos on this channel to help you choose the best bag for you. We'll leave links to all that down in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Thanks for keeping me here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel, and we will see you in the next video.